roll. The dirty little secret in dog training is that it has very little to do with the dog. It has more to do with us. You can't predict what's going to happen, but you can prepare how you'll respond. So you want to make sure that you're focused on the environment and human behavior, and then the dog learns really well. Behavior's in the environment, not in the dog. If you really want to help dogs, it's not about one film. It's about film every day. It's about content every day. So it's the ripple effect. It's not just one time. You want to just bombard culture with the proper info. Right. So today what we're going to be doing, me and M-Dog, Mr. Martin Cole, we're going to be recording puppy kindergarten orientation. So this is where we have people come in, uh, they get their puppy packets right here. So they get a packet of information. It's going to help them prior to getting into the class with the dogs, right? So they have a lot of information on house training, crate training, mouthing, how to play fetch, tug, etc. So we set everybody up for success before we actually get in the room. Uh, the reason why we do a human only orientation is because once we get the puppies in here and it's hectic and you know myself and my assistant Laura are refereeing dog play and answering questions and teaching it's not really the time to talk about this kind of stuff in depth right so right now we get everybody in the room for an hour we get total focus answer all the questions and then when the dogs come in we're much better prepared to have a class um, with dogs in the room and that's why we do a human only orientation a lot of uh, Sadly, a lot of people I talk to, they don't do a human-only orientation. They just jump right in with the dogs, and that's not necessarily bad, but there's so many questions related to puppies. My dog's peeing over here, my dog's chewing this, my dog's having trouble on leash. My... So to be able to have an hour where we just talk and there's no distractions is huge. And I've been doing it this way for 12 years at Urban Dogs and it really helps. So that's, that's why we do it and that's why it works and that's why we're here. Right, guys, thank you so much for being here today. Um, all I can say is you are doing a fabulous thing um, by having you know this experience for your puppies. One of the things that I always run into whenever I am working with clients who've not gone to puppy kindergarten or puppy socials is their puppies are either a little bit more shy than we would like, or perhaps maybe they're a little bit more excited and over the top right, or frustrated. So the fact that you guys will be here with your puppies for six weeks socializing with other dogs and bringing them to Red Bank is massive. And anybody who foregoes that is really taking a lot of debits out of your dog's associative learning. That the more your puppy gets out, the more people they meet, the more they experience. And we're going to talk about how to really impact their associative learning so that when they do see a skateboard or kids running or other dogs, I'm going to give you guys the tools on how to counter condition those events so they feel really good about them. The reason why we are 100% positive, force-free, that, that means we don't do any blaming. We, we train and explain. So we're not blaming you. We don't blame the dogs. Dogs are innocent, and you guys are learning. And as a trainer of dogs, you're both the teacher and the student. So I'm teaching you, you're the student, and then you're teaching your dog, and then you become the teacher. So that's really the dynamic. So we keep things stress-free in here. We're not worried about perfection. We want everybody to have a good time. The most important thing in class is to have fun. Um, but we do work, and we do definitely want to make sure that we're focused on teaching the dogs and doing what we can to help them along. Um, the main reason why those of us, myself and others, who train dogs do things without the use of fear and force is because we know that fear generalizes very easy. So if the dog's afraid of your hands or your voice or your approach, that means everybody after you is going to have a warning. Okay, So that generalization of fear is really crucial. And uh, Dr. Susan Friedman, who I was fortunate enough to study with a few years back, says you never have to add any fear into your dog's life. The environment will give you plenty for your dog to learn how to deal with that. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth, but this is how your dog processes everything in life. And a lot of stuff makes your dog feel unsafe, even though they're totally safe. So a dog can land 25 bites in four seconds. So if you do things to cause your dog behavior issues and they have extreme fear or apprehensions, that can lead to aggression. The underlying cause for aggression is fear. 
okay? So if you're jabbing your dog or, you know, you're choking them with a chain to get them to do stuff or to stop do stuff, yeah, I mean, they'll more likely not stop, but what's left in its place. So that's why we keep things positive and force-free because we don't want you guys to run into problems down the road with a dog who's fearful and biting and aggressive, okay? So that's why we keep it positive. Um, jumping in right away to how dogs learn, associative learning is the main way, and we all probably heard about Pavlov, right? He rang the bell because he was going to give the dogs food after they drooled. He was like, ah, they drool at the bell. So that predictive value, that associative learning is huge, and dogs rely on this for everything, okay? So there's always how the dog feels about the event. So this is how your dog feels about stuff, and the consequences are the sequences or the flow charts that they learn and that we teach them. Um, everything from the leash to your approach to sounds outside, you name it. If dogs are paying attention to it, they're making an association to it. And again, like I said, a lot of stuff may start unsafe. And where people go wrong is, let's say the dog is barking at somebody out the window, and they yell at the dog and scold the dog, and the dog stops barking. All the dogs learned is, okay, well, the people outside are kind of fearful or frustrating, and my people are scary, so I'm going to stop barking. But they don't have a better association to that event. So it's always crucial that when your dog's having a moment that you reassure them, use training, use setup management so that they're not rehearsing stuff, and then they're going to have the least amount of stress in events, and that's really crucial. So consequence learning is the other way that dogs learn, and consequence drives behavior. So consequences come in a lot of different forms. The main thing about consequences is it teaches the dog what works and what doesn't work. So for instance, if I have a dog, let's say they're behind this gate or I'm at a door and I ask the dog to wait and I crack the gate or the door an inch and they move, shut the door. Wait, oop, wait, okay. So if they hold it on that one, then they get to go and then the reward is you get to go outside or you get to leave your enclosure. So I don't need a food treat there. Um, I might use a training cue as a consequence. Right? So if the dog's across the room or the yard and I need something from them, I'm not just going to say dog name, dog name, dog name, dog name, because all they have to do is look back and they basically done what I said. They answered to their name. Leave it all the way. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Come on, buddy. Dog leaves it. Give them a treat. Redirect them where I want them to go. That's a consequence. And then timeouts, which we're going to talk about. So if the dog's paws go up on a table, it's not, hey, off, right? Because that's not much of a consequence and it's kind of reinforcing. It's too bad. And I'm going to gently take the dog to their timeout place and let them know pause on table doesn't work ever because I don't want you to spill the coffee, grab the steak knife, ruin my laptop, etc. Okay, so there's no negotiating for certain things that you want timeouts for. Same thing with jumping. So if the dog jumps on me, my level one, my micro timeout is, okay, you lost me. My macro timeout is, too bad, jumping equals you lose me or you lose freedom. Okay, and if you're consistent and kind with your consequences, dogs learn quick. Okay, where a lot of people go wrong is, hey, off. Hey, cut it out. If hey, no, cut it out worked, I would be out of business because everybody comes through that door with the hey, no, cut it out routine. And while if you're, as long as you're not causing your dog fear or pain, hey, no, cut it out routines won't ruin your dog, but it's not going to get them trained. They're not going to figure out, oh, because you know, one time I was up on here and you kind of went, come on, buddy, off the table. And the other time you tie me out. So which one is it? So you want to stay kind and consistent with your, your consequences and you want to make sure that you're working hard um, to have your dog feel good about all the things in their life that they're going to encounter because that's going to help you out in all areas. Learning stuff, not having stress, not being frustrated, and obviously the fear and the aggression stuff is really what we want to avoid. Okay, we're waiting on three more pups. Uh, we're going to wait for them just because we have... So you, what you really want to do, because you're not going to reduce the barking by snapping your fingers and saying, okay. Ch -ch -ch, you're going to make her more stressed, okay? okay? So you have a dog who has an overly generalized stress right now, okay? Yep. That's why she's really apprehensive to take the food, and she's barking. So if your child was stressed, they would console, right? And try to figure out how to finesse that. Same thing, yes, same thing with dogs. So if by marking and paying, she's going to have a lot better association to being on leash around these dogs, okay? okay. If you go, hey, she may stop, but she's going to have a negative association to you, the dog, the room, okay. right? So, okay. Yeah, so I'm just letting you know, a lot of people, they're, you know, it seems counterintuitive, but if you go the other way and you say, it's okay, good girl, and you massage her, yes, and you pay her and offer her a treat for the dogs, you'll see in real time that her stress will go down. Okay. All right. Okay. Good job. There you go. Right, and fear trumps food. 
So if the dog's really stressed, they're not going to take food. Yeah, there's I've there's no that. picky eaters. They're not stubborn. No, I've seen that when right. she locks on to another. She's sure. seen another dog that I didn't see coming, and she locks on, and I try to give her food right. to calm her. So she, really, really keep your eyes open and make sure that you're ahead, you're ahead of that. So when the dog's coming, you can, yes, and treat, yeah. right? Yes, and treat the whole time, okay? Yeah. 80% of the time I get it right now. Okay, cool. Well, that's all right. No, but no one's perfect. You'll get it. Rest in peace, Cy. That's where I had to put my dog Silas down. So I always give him a little blessing when I pass there. Yeah, Lila is a great dog. I've been working with her and her family for years. I did uh, baby prep sessions for Max, who's now a toddler. So now I'm doing toddler sessions and getting him acclimated to having a large dog. She's a sweetheart. She's super trained. I mean, Lila's like, she's what we call a dog on Duracell. She's just on batteries, at least with me anyway. I got her dialed in. We're like Sha Shaq and Kobe when they were winning rings. So, uh, and her people are good. You know, they messed up another. So we had to install electric fence. So she ran through with electric fence a couple of times. She got zipped a couple of times. I noticed when I took her for a walk, she started reacting to dogs and little kids. She started barking at them. So it, re it was really hard to control her and I put a prong collar on her. I thought it's gonna be easier to control her and it got even worse. Despite her uh, unfavorable puppyhood and some mistakes that her people made, She's a sound dog, I mean, she's, you know, but if you just walk in her house and start waving your hands in her face, she, she's probably gonna bite you, male or female. So, you know, no one's breaking in because she's big and she's a Rottweiler. You don't need all that extra fear. It's people, you know, and they didn't do it for that, they just didn't know any better, you know. Their culture, their, their cultural baggage is that's how you train dogs, and then when things got real sketchy and she bit a girl, her mom said, whoa, I gotta fix this, and that's when they hired me. Uh, really nice people though, super sweet, super sweet. The little son in this house, little Max, very precocious young man, he, uh, his mom texted me, and uh, Gabriella, and she was like, Max is, in, is obsessed with you, he wants to when you're coming back, you had a great time, and I was like, ah, it's cute, so she said, but, on. She said, but one of you know one of the issues he has is he's okay. So come with me. So Lila's barking. Come with me. Come with me. So I just heard her bark. It's okay, good girl. It's okay. So one of the issues that Gabrielle has been having with uh, Max is that he keeps sitting on Lila, and while she's tolerating it, it's definitely not the best thing for. A three-year-old would be doing is sitting on an 80-pound Rottweiler. So I'm going to give him this little dog today, and I'm going to say, I'm going to give this to you as a present, but if I find out you're sitting on live, I'm going to have your mom take it back and give it to me. So we're going to use a little positive reinforcement, right, and some negative reinforcement. So here's your reward, but if you mess up, we take it away. So that's how we're going to hopefully get him to not sit on Lila. All right, so here's the deal, buddy. Um, this is the backyard. This is where we're going to start. Um, so I'm going to have you position like right over here, not right up on the gate. Okay. Okay. Like, so it's right over here. We're going to come out there, right over there on the porch. And uh, when she comes to the gate, I'm just going to mark and pay. What I need you to do is to just not move too much. Just sort of plant it, use your focus. I don't care, you know, if the fence is in the way or whatever. I'm gonna have the GoPro going as well, all right? Okay. And then I'll just instruct you to come closer as I need you. So yeah, right about there, perfect. Hi, good girl. I'm gonna go around. Voila. Voila. Hi, good girl. How are you? What's going on? Hey, Max. Hey. Hi, Gabriella. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Well, guess what? I got a present for you. Lila, leave it. Leave Max. Touch. Actually, she's 
Right. right. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yep, I gave her a bit. How are you, buddy? What's going on? Give me five. I got a present for you. Okay, hold on. Lila, sit down. Stay. Okay, so I need, I need Gabriella to hear this too, okay? So here's your present, all right? I have this little dog for you. But here's the deal, all right? Wait a minute, hold on. There, okay? Here's the deal. I'm gonna give you this toy. I love this little toy, right? You can name this little dog, whatever you want. But if you sit on Lila, okay? If you sit on her or if you jump on her, your mom's gonna take this away, all right? For one week, okay? Deal? No more jumping on Lila, right? Not jumping on no Lila. jumping on Lila, no and, on and that's Lila. yours. All right. Yeah. Okay. So wow, if you man. if you jump on her, Mama's gonna take your little dog away. You can bring that dog everywhere you go. That's like your little buddy. You wanna go play? Yeah. Wanna go outside and play? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Take your time. Take your time. We'll all go out together because I want her. Yeah. I want Lila to feel as good as possible yeah. when we head outside. Lila, wait. Wait. Wait, Matt. Okay, so as soon as we go out, she's probably gonna see uh, Martin, the cameraman, so I'm gonna get ready. Wait, I'm gonna get Is ready. behind again? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. You're happy today, yes! Get your ball, get your ball. Ah, good girl. Matt, how far away do we stay from Lila? Yeah, good job, that far away. Come right onto the grass. Hold on, bud. Remember. Yep. So what I what I did was when I started out, I just got one mark and pay. Drop it. Yes. Ready? Get your ball. I got one mark and pay, and then I played and kind of faded the camera out. And then after I got some... Be careful, buddy. Drop it. Yep, there you go. After I got some play in and she's feeling better, then I gradually brought her over to you and I switched my position. So now she brings the ball over here. Yes. I mark and pay. <laughs> By the way, Gabrielle, that's Martin. Martin, that's Gabrielle. Hi. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Yes. Do you see how powerful that marker is? When I mark her for looking at you, she runs right over to get paid. Yeah. You know? So the other thing is, is that having a touch, a leave it, a sit, a wait, getting the dog focused on the ball, not you, all that's gonna work in our favor. And now you're gonna reach down and you're gonna throw the ball. <laughs> Cause that's gonna be a big reward for her. Yeah, good girl. Nice catch. And if you got that on film and you threw it, you're getting some kind of an award. <laughs> Every time she orients to you, the camera, I just pay. That ball throw that you did for her was huge. That was like, you know, well again, it's like I don't want you to hand her food because, you know, I don't I don't want her to get spooked. Yes, but at the same time, I was kind of hope I was gonna actually hand you the ball, so it's kind of funny that she watch out, buddy, that she uh what time? 9 08. 
Oh, we got good. We got a lot of time. So I want to integrate you in here if we can. Because she did really well with the cameras and everything. I think she did. Yeah, she'll be okay. Yep, I think so. So Martin, just move uh, down to your right a little bit. Yeah, there you go. It's opening this way. That way? Okay. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So just stand still. Ready to gate and Gabrielle? Yes! Just make sure the gate is open. Or not open, but make sure you're ready to, if, if uh, you need to leave. Okay. You'll be all right, though. She's going to be okay now. Yeah. Max, stay here. Stay there. Yes! Yeah, don't point the camera at her. Yes! Keep the camera on me. I'll get her on the GoPro. I don't want anything in her face. Yes! You can shut the gate in case. Yeah, he'll be alright. You need it? Yes. Good girl. Yes. So we're just let her smell you. She wants to. Your shoes smell like your dog. So I'm just gonna throw some treats like right at your feet, so she's like right there. That's why I wear the GoPro. Leave it. Touch. Yes. Yeah, just in general, like leave it all the way. than it is to go with dog name, right? You know, that whole dog name. You know, people say their name with that dog name. I mean, if your dog's trying to do a stay, like when I have dogs staying with me, yes! When I have dogs staying with me and I have to have them wait at the top of the stairs, I'll go, stay, right? Because I really need them to stay, but I'm not like yelling at them, you know? But if they were checking out a guest, I would be like, oh, good boy, we like people. Oh, you got such a good touch. So see how she, she circles in, she checks you out and comes right back? That's because she's getting paid for you. We've done a lot of work with people and Lila and coming in. And... Nice. Nice, good girl. Yes. Yes. So you see how she goes? It's great that she goes right to you, bounces off because you now predict getting food. Yeah, see? Can you catch? Oh, good catch. Good girl. Yeah, she plays me a lot. Is that a good girl? Is it normal? Yeah! That's my Sometimes she doesn't, she just looks back to see. But that's, but that's how you know the conditioning's working. When she looks at something and she looks back, yes. And then you can change your criteria, so then instead of just paying for when she looks at it, if she looks away, you can pay for the look away. You can pay for a couple of looks and look aways. I switch criteria mid-training all the time. And that's what, uh, that's what ruins a lot of people is they don't realize, oh, I can switch now. Or I can do a little of both. Like, I might yes and treat her four or five times for a jogger, and then the last look, I ask her to leave it. Or the T-O-U-C-H, because I know her touch is legendary. If you ask her to T-O-C-H anywhere in your house, she will run and find your hand. Right? And that's, you know, you got to know your dog, your environment, and you got to be able to be flexible. You know, and for a dog who has, you know, bona fide issues with people coming into your property or your home, you know, as long as you set it up right, and you've seen that time and time again, if people just do their job, which is, hi, good girl, and don't try to touch her, and she's gated, she gets some treats, she's got her work eat toy, or in this case here, we gradually have Martin come in, it'll be fine. Where people mess up is they just go, oh, she's been good for a while. I took her actually yesterday in the morning by to the park by okay. myself because so there's nobody there in the morning on Sunday. Oh, nice. And she loved it. Good. Yeah, she was fine. Yeah. You're fine, right? Touch. 
Yeah, we're gonna go up? Yes, we're gonna walk. Maybe I'm gonna get his bicycle again. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Lila for a walk. Move. Yes! Stay. <laughs> I'll give you dog, dog training shoes to stay. <laughs> you want me to sit? Not yet. I want you to just chill. Don't talk too much. Yes! Yeah, don't, don't talk. We don't want any more stimulus. Yes! Hold on, guys. I gotta, I gotta suit up. All right, so we're gonna talk about our marker word. Who remembers what the marker word is? And how do we use that? Right? We, well, we definitely want to pair it with a treat, but when do we use it? What, what's the purpose of the marker? Or positive behavior. One more time? Or positive behavior. Well, we want to pay the dog for behavior, right? And we mark that behavior by saying yes, and that lets the dog know here comes the food. So it's a contract with your dog. We say it one time, and then we deliver the treat. Okay? And it also helps us humans because we don't have to train with food in our hand, okay? If we say yes, it buys us a two to four second bridge to get that food to the dog, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go around the room and do name recognition. It's really important that you always say your dog's name in a positive way because if they have a negative association to their name and that's the first thing that comes out of your mouth most times, they're gonna be stressed and they may tune you out, okay? So you're gonna say your dog's name one time and if they turn around and say, yep, that's my name, yes and treat, but if they're distracted, you want to use a prompt or a little kissy sound, something like that, and then pay them, okay? So we'll start here with you guys, and then we'll go around the room three times, okay? You ready? Go ahead. Yes. Good. Mark and pay him. Make a sound. Yes. Good. Okay, hold on a sec. Got to wait, wait for her to not be looking at you. Okay, now. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. Make a sound. Make a sound. Yes. Nice. Make a sound. Yes. Good. Nice. Yes. Bella. Nice. Nice. Gracie. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Love the little clicky sounds. It's great. Okay. Nice. Good job. One more time. Nice. Bella. Nice. Nice. Gracie. Yeah. 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 There you go. Okay. Great. So, at least a dozen times a day for the next six months, I'm not exaggerating, say your dog's name, prompt if needed, and mark and pay, okay? High value if needed. Right. Okay, uh, now we're gonna talk about the sit cue. Um, if you've been saying the word S-I-T, I want you to refrain from saying that for two days. And here's why. Because a lot of times people will say the word way sooner than the dog really has the behavior. I could have the word tangerine mean sit because it's not the word necessarily, it's the payment, right? It's the reinforcement. Butt hits the ground, I give you a treat. Butt hits the ground, I open a door. Butt hits the ground, I toss a toy. So it's not the word necessarily. We use words that we use because that's how we communicate. But I want you to use the hand signal for sit for two days like this. Yes. Okay. Now this is the international hand signal for sit because when you take the treat and you place it over the dog's nose. They lean back and they follow it. So anatomically, yes, dogs will sit. All right? And if you do this for a couple of days, and then on day three, you say the word, and then you back it up with the hand signal, your word will end up, per, um, your word will end up predicting the hand signal. Sit? Yes. Now, if you have a verbal, that's great, but just humor me, and let's just do the hand signal for a couple of days. Now what I want you to do today in class is lure your dog towards you into a sit. Yes. Towards you into a sit. Yes. When their butt hits the ground, mark yes. Um, everybody has someone to hold the leash except for you, but you'll be okay. So have someone hold the leash. Whoever's training, just bring the dog toward you. Put them in a sit with the hand signal. Yes. And then do it again. So we're just going to go back and forth, working like a nice four foot space. Yes, good girl. Great. I love the fact that you're using those prompts. 
you put a lure in there, right? And then the dog follows your lure. Yes. Okay, then you just lure them out, lure them right back in. Yes. Oh, what, you're happy, huh? So a little slower. Yes. Right? And then just right out. Yes. What do you got for treats there? Yeah, here you go. You probably have a little bit more success with that. Nice. Good job. Good mechanics. Yes. Good job. Nice. Good work there, buddy. Okay, guys, go ahead. Finish up the, the sit that you're working on, and then we're going to get these kids back into play. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about emergency recall. And the reason why it's called emergency recall is because, A, we hope, uh, go ahead, put maple on leash, please. We want to make sure that we never need this, but if we do, it's much like a fire drill. You want to practice this so that you're ready. So you all have this sheet in your packet, and you, said, uh, you have a video link. So the most, most important thing about recall, emergency recall practice, is don't end your dog's fun or freedom with the recall. Meaning, if your dog's in the backyard having a good time, you're at a beach or something, don't go, dog, come, and leash him up. If they're running around the house having a good time, you've got to go to work, don't go, dog, come, and put them in their crate. Because you will erode your recall, and fast forward, you do a lot of dog come, and there's no big payment, and you end their fun and freedom, and they get out of the house at 10 o'clock at night, and they're two houses down, and you go, dog, come, and they go, nah, you're going to end my fun, and I'm having a blast out here. right? You're going to be scared, but they're going to be concerned. right? So when you do this, you want to make sure that you always pay high value food and then you let them go back to what they were doing. Right. Callie, okay. So go ahead and take what you have a word for her recall? Come, hurry, pronto, made it. Well, that's because she's not getting reinforced. Yeah. All right, let her go. Laura, stand up. Callie, come! Whoop, 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 Yes. Dogs are always listening. When dogs don't do what you're asking them, it's real simple. They have a major distraction and they don't have enough reinforcement for the thing you're asking. And remember, your payment, your money matters. So if I'm in a backyard and I'm doing recall, I'm not using kibble, I'm using steak, chicken, roast beef. Because when I condition emergency recall, I want the dog's brain to register chicken, steak, roast beef, and then they're gonna let me go, right? <laughs> I want the dog to think at 10 o'clock at night when they're two houses down and I'm scared because my relative who's visiting let the dog out of the house, that when I go, dog comes they're just like food and freedom that's what you're conditioning but if you do lots of come come here come come and you end their fun you end their freedom and there's no payment it's gonna happen your, your dog's gonna get away from you it always happens to somebody at least once I can tell you two times in my life it happened to me and I'm so glad my recall was tight so we're gonna do this one at a time uh, let's pick maple up on your lap Ilsa up on your lap let's put Kush on your lap let's put her on your lap we're gonna start with Gracie okay so do you have a word for Gracie's recall? Come, okay, great. So go ahead and take her off leash. You're gonna say her name, recall word, and then make a lot of sounds to cheer her on. When she gets to you, grab, mark yes, pay her, and then let her go. Okay, go ahead, call. Gracie, come. Nice, prompt, make sounds. Louder than a whistle. Whoop, whoop, pop, pop. That's it, keep, keep, keep doing that, keep doing that. There you go, there you go, keep doing that. Grab her, yes, and then pay her well. Laura, back that payment up. Yeah, there you go. Right? And then let her go. And then Laura will wrangle her up. So do you see how much more she was motivated when you went whoop, whoop? Right? So the, the take home here is you can condition those sounds out of the context of recall. I was, I've been doing it all class. Whoop, whoop. They run. I pay them. Okay? Okay, great. That's right, Ilsa. Go ahead and take her off leash. She's like, yeah, all these crazy dogs are on leash. <laughs> all right, what's your word? Okay, call her. Okay, make your sounds. Louder than a kissy sound. Yep, keep whoop whooping. Okay, don't quit. Keep going. All right, stop. Laura, try. Laura just went into Beyonce territory there. <laughs> A little mini Ripperton. Uh. So, but the take home is get super happy, get get loud and happy, right? This is the thing. You need to practice this just as much as your dog. Because when the game is on and you have a holy heck moment and the, and the dog gets away from you, 
You want practice. So practice your sounds in the car. Practice them in your yard. Okay? All right? Um, here we go. Okay, what's your word? Okay. Classic. <gasps> Who's my happy buddy? All right, call her. Bella, come. Bella. Stopping for an inch. Bella, okay, keep going, keep going. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Grab your dog. Bella, come. Grab your dog. Yes. Good. Pay her. Pay her well. Okay. You have to become really good at wrangling and grabbing your dog. Okay? I'm in a lot of sessions throughout the year and everybody's bragging at the kitchen table how great their dog's recall is. And when we go in the yard, yeah, the dog runs over but nobody can catch it. Right, doing this move, I'm around the pool, you can't get me. That's not fun when your dog gets out of your yard and you're scared, okay? All right, let's try Kush. Go ahead. Kush, come. Make your sounds. Make your sounds. Nice, yeah, good, pay him, nice. Ready? 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 Right. You, can go, you can go ahead and you can leash him up. Just leash him up. Right. You're okay, honey. You're okay. Go ahead. Make your sounds. Okay, stop. Kelly, come! Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so we really, we really gotta pour it on for them, okay? We really gotta figure out, you know, what I can do to get this dog over to me and be happy. Okay, go ahead, leash her up. Everyone went, right? Everybody did a recall? Okay, good, so three times a day, morning, noon, night. Don't assembly line these. You do five in a row, they're really great on recall three. You need to practice this off the cuff as a surprise. So everybody have a fence yard? Okay, so in your fence yard, you're hanging out, 10 minutes go by, your dog's having a good time, do a recall. 20 minutes goes by, do another recall, right? But don't do them all in a row. So one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night, for the next six months, three times a day. Really hammer this home that this is your emergency recall and then spot check it once a day for the first year and then at least a couple times a week for life. It's a good idea to keep this nice and tight. Sit. So we've been talking about the sit cue in uh, episode one and the thing about sit that's really important is you need a hand signal and you don't want to just chant sit, sit, sit. Ralphie, leave it. Sit. Yes. Right? So I back that verbal up with the hand signal. Now here's the thing to remember. When you say sit, yes, and you back it up with that hand signal for a dog that doesn't have a reliable sit, the verbal ends up predicting the hand signal. That's why in class when I say just practice, yes, the hand signal for two days and then add the verbal. You need at least 80% of the behavior before you start naming it. Sit, yes, you really wanna have a good hand signal for sit because you need to back up that verbal. Good man, hold on a sec. The verbal will start to predict the hand signal if you say SIT, weighted beat, and if the dog doesn't do it, you back it up with the hand signal. Then your verbal predicts the hand signal, predicted value. Okay? Any word could mean put your butt on the ground in a sit position, but we use words like sit, down, and stay because that's the language humans use. But I've worked with dogs who are bilingual, I work with dogs who speak Greek, Russian, French, German, Italian, Spanish, and they all sit on the words that those people use in their languages as well as the English. Yes. The other thing that I like about the hand signal is that for dogs like Ralphie who are a little jumpy, you can thwart a lot of that jumping by having the hand signal preempt the jump. Yes, good job, fix your hair. Okay, so if you had a strong hand signal for sit, you're gonna do much better than if you're just saying the word sit, 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 sit. You don't want a machine gun it. You wanna say it one time, give the dog a chance to do it, and then back it up with your hand signal. Ralphie, sit. Yes. Ralphie's got a great sit, so I don't need the hand signal, but what if I was over here doing something or I was on the phone, right? and I needed to have the dog do the SIT. Yeah, I'll be there around six o'clock. I don't know, man, traffic's kind of tough. No, I'm kissing uh, my dog to get him over to me. Yeah, I need his focus. Anyway, all right, I'll see you then. Right, so if I'm on the phone, I'm busy, and I need to work with my dog in the yard or around the house, I can use the hand signal. 
and then you have much more efficient behavior. So episode one, we've been talking about emergency recall practice in puppy class. And um, the most important thing to remember about emergency recall is don't end your dog's fun or freedom with the recall. Meaning, don't make it a big production like, dog, come. And then they come running, you bring them in the house, you put them in their crate. Whenever you use your emergency recall, it should be for practice, like a fire drill, right? You want to get excited, you want to grab the dog at the end of the recall, mark yes, pay them high value food, and then let them go back to their fun and freedom. When it comes time to end fun casually, or if you're gonna just separate dogs, you're gonna have a dog over there, etc. you just go like this. Okay guys, come here. Over here, come on. There you go. Come on, my my, good girl. Right? So when I end their fun or their freedom, and obviously this isn't a big ending of fun or freedom because, you know, they still have each other to play with, but that's how casual you wanna do it, okay? When it comes time to do your recall, right? when it comes time to do an emergency recall, that's where you really want to pour it on. You want to be really salient. Bosley, come! Yes. OK, we'll pay Miley too, because <laughs> she came over. But that's how you want to do it. You want to have a nice big production. You want to make it really salient, all right? Because if you don't, dog, come, dog, dog, dog name, dog, dog name, um, dog, no. It's dog name, recall word, pop, 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 all your sounds. When they get to you, you grab, that's the yes moment. You pay them high value food and then you let them go. That's two levels of payment. That's you get food for running to me and letting me grab you because you got to have a grab or else you don't have a recall. And then I let you go back to whatever you were doing. So if you have that two level payment system, you end up with a really solid recall. If you don't have a fenced in yard, and you need to work on recall with your dog, um, one of the things you can do is get a long line like this, just a regular leash that's 30 feet long, and do some recall in areas that uh, are gonna provide a little bit more distraction, but the long line keeps everything safe. So you can, you know, you can do it at the beach. We do it here behind the uh, library. I think Ralphie's smelling that groundhog. So what I do is I put the leash through this, like this, so I still have my dog on my waist, and I have 30 feet, and I can practice my emergency recall, I can practice my touch. You just got to be good at wrangling is all. Ralphie, come! Whoop, 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 whoop. Again, you want to do these sporadically. You don't want to do a 10 in a row. So, you know, when you get to your environment where you're going to do your recall, all you have to do is, Ralphie, leave it, touch. Yes, so something caught his attention. So I asked for that leave it, touch combo. And that's how you do long distance touches and recalls if you don't have a fenced yard or you can't find a tennis court. Regardless of how good I am at explaining things or demonstrating things, when the people then go to implement it, now it's their mechanics and timing. That's the variable. Humans are the variable. So when somebody says to me, well, wow, you're great with the dog. You know, I wish I could be that way. Well, you don't have to be like me. You just have to become a great trainer for your dog. Again, if people want to be good trainers for their dog, they got to do it. They got to do it. I always tell people, think of it like playing a sport. You and the dog are on the team. The environment is the opponent. And if you look at it that way, you don't, you don't end up with an adversarial relationship. You end up with a partnership, and then you really start to see good things happen. Results start to occur much quicker because you're controlling the environment through your actions, and that's how the dog learns better. I teach survival skills. Okay, so when I talk about dog training, I'm talking about companion dogs in a home with kids walking down streets and cities and suburbs. I teach survival skills to humans and dogs so they will reduce their stress, have more success, and the dog can stay in the home. My job is not to make my clients into world-class trainers. My job is not to blame my clients for being bad at dog training. My job is to explain and train, okay? I explain and train, that's what I do.